everyone in Russia knows this. You've got to get it perfect or you are screwed for the whole year. I always took this seriously, even in America. Every year, I would get depressed right after Thanksgiving. I hoarded pickled herrings, pickled cabbage, pickles, black caviar, red caviar, and eggplant caviar. Yes, Russian people have eggplant caviar. Don't ask cultural differences. I polished the house clean. I brought pink tinsel. On the New Year night, we had champagne right at midnight, not a second before or after. That is, the cork flew into the ceiling one minute to twelve, bubbling Soviet champagne poured into the crystal glasses at thirty seconds to twelve, right on the ball drop, we chocolate did and made a wish. The American tradition of kissing someone right at midnight brought more issues. We swallowed the champagne and started kissing tons tingling sour. Last year, everything went wrong. My husband opened champagne three minutes late. Oh no, I said. My daughter to roll tries. Did you eat your hair in, sweetheart? I asked her. Leave me alone, mom, she said, chewing her gum. You know, it's not my idea of spending the New Year's at Mary's party, sweetheart. You know we have a tradition. The family stays together for the New Year's. It's important for me. I hate your tradition, she said. Who eats herring at midnight? I hate your herring. I hate your books. And I hate your hair. My husband and my son laughed. What books are you talking about? What's wrong with my hair? I said. It's too puffy, too red, too Russian. Madame Bavary is a bitch. Did you actually finish the book? I asked. I watched the movie. I hate her. Her husband's kind to her, but she's just bored and she hates everyone and hurts them. And I hate reading anyways. She threw a napkin on the floor and ran to her room. I hate you, said my son from his high chair. He threw his teddy bear at me, but missed and hit the Soviet champagne bottle. I froze. Like in a slow motion video, the bottle dropped, rolled off the table, and broke on the hardwood floor. Champagne foaming over the melee and emerald glass pieces. Muzzle off, said my husband. He went to his study, slamming the door behind him. I closed my eyes and sat like this for a while, thinking about the New Year's bad luck, my marriage and my life, and how I really had hope for a better year. Then I heard crushing and crackling right next to me. I looked up. My cat Birdie sat on the table, a piece of heron in her mouth, her cold green eyes on me, unblinking. My son laughed and said, Mazel tov. <laughs> Next morning I went to Varvara, a Ukrainian fortune teller. <laughs> I had bad luck on my New Year's night, I said, after paying her $40. Varvara, a large woman with chestnut mustache, took my hand, turned it around, sighed and said, I see. It's bad. Listen, go blonde, wear new shoes, lots of jewelry. For the old new year, leave Brooklyn. Go to a bar in Manhattan. Now, I forgot to mention that Russians have two New Years, just like Australian Aboriginals have two parallel times. In Russia, January 13th is an old New Year. In olden times, the Russian Empire used to be 13 days behind the West. Then communists decided to catch up. The new New Year kicked in, but the old New Year never died off. We don't just live double life, we celebrate it. And it's convenient. You can undo the bad luck from the New Year's night. Manhattan, I asked. Yes, you have to leave Brighton Beach, said Varvara. Find a bar. You will meet three men. The first man is your past. The second man is your present. The third man is your future. Listen to what they say, but do not sleep with them. Just listen. Write down what they say. Then call me. Come for the fortune reading consultation. What if I meet a woman, I asked. You won't she said. I spent the next 12 days preparing for the old new year. I bought Manolo Blahnik sandals, blown my yearly budget for shoes. I had my makeup done at Macy's. At 11 p.m. I was at Starlight Room at Majestic Hotel in Manhattan. At 11.30, a bulky guy with mousy hair came up to me and invited me to dance. The disco music boomed and it was hard to hear him. Hey, let
let me ask you, he screamed into my ear, you're a chic Russian woman, you sure like borscht. No, I said, I don't like beets. Beetles, he said, of course not, no woman like you should drive a better car. Car, I said, a borscht, he shouted into the, my ear through the music, nice slightly used, I'll sell it for you and help with finance and wanna go to Miami with me. <laughs> Thanks, I said, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. In the bathroom, I examined my clothes in the mirror. Blonde, borscht, what would that mean? I remember my nanny reading her future coffee cup, twirling a tiny porcelain cup in her hands, looking at it shiny inside. She'd follow the dark brown zigzags and circles with her finger, whispering a man, a husband, a a wheel, a new car, a pillow, a lover. I could do that too, I thought. I don't need Barbara to interpret my past. The past is clear. Russia, peace, a crappy car, and immigration. True. At 11.40, five, a man with only black eyes and a slick smile came up to me and said, you're a pretty Russian woman. Sexy. You Russian woman good with people. I own a restaurant, Turkish cuisine, Mediterranean, hummus, falafel, you know, good food. You nice to me, I get your job. Want to be a waitress? Thank you, I said. Sorry, I need to make a phone call. In the hallway, I clutched my tiger print purse. I looked at the starlit sky. Stars blinked at me, sparkling, silently laughing at me, teasing me and my present. A waitress, I thought. A waitress means delivering goodies, waiting on people, waiting for something grand to happen. That was me. The clock on the big tower showed 3 to 12. Hey, lovely lady, said a voice behind me. You look like you lost your dream. My future, I thought. I turned around and faced a black man with a stick all the chain around his neck. His big eyes shone in the darkness. He was beautiful. You waited for me all your life, didn't you, he said. He flashed his white even teeth at me, winked and said, my name is Freedom. Freedom? Freedom, he said. You don't believe me. He reached for his pocket and pulled out his driving license. Freedom and Freedom Jones. I'm from Alabama. You know Alabama? Yes, I said. Dance with me, said Freedom. I looked at the tower clock, tower clock outside. Midnight. The hands on the clock gleamed. The music played. Now softly, I smiled and said, Sure, I'd love to dance with you. Freedom. Yeah. <laughs>